Good evening. I'm Pastor Mark Colbo of the Michigan Lutheran Church of Michigan, North Dakota. And this is our midweek devotional video for, it is uh, April, what is the date? <laughs> April 10th, 2024. Sorry about that. I've got I just got done with the council meeting and and my head is just kind of swimming with dates and details. April 10th, 2024. And uh, this is our midweek devotional video. We uh, finished the Lenten series on the Ten Commandments last week. Now we are back on kind of a regular calendar of whatever comes up on a particular day or in the season or a particular theme I might wish to talk about. Well, it so happens that today there is a date and it probably isn't something that maybe you would all relate to, but I do want to mention it because it is part of our uh, history of the Lutheran Church and also that we have, um, it, there's an important principle behind uh, it. Anyway, today we commemorate on the calendar, among many other uh, commemorations that go throughout the year, some of you probably never heard of. Unless you're a student of history, and especially European history or Reformation history, and that is Mikhail Agricola. And I don't know if I pronounced that right, because he is Finnish. And you know, I would say Agricola, uh, but they say the pronunciation of all Finnish words is on the first syllable, strong, strong accent on the first syllable. So it'd be Agricola, but I, uh, I'm gonna say Agricola, so I uh, um, maybe do what I'm used to anyway. And he was uh, a Finnish reformer uh, Lutheran Finnish reformer from the 15th, uh, 1500s, right about the time of Luther. In fact, he met Luther. So there is that, and we'll mention that uh, in a little bit. But we'll continue here with our evening prayer, as we usually do. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever, O Son of God, O giver of life. The universe proclaims your glory. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. 
Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. And so, as I say, we commemorate this day Mikhail Agricola, Bishop of Turku, renewer of the church. He died April 10th, 1557, which is why then we have our commemoration for this day on the date of his death back in 1557. 1557 being the date of his death puts him right around the time of Luther. Of course, Luther died about 10 years earlier than that. Mikhail Agricola accent on the first syllable is written right here in the history, as in most Finnish words, not compounds. See why it mentions Finnish words, not only that he's Finnish, but it's very important that it's the Finnish language. He was born in Usima, Finland, about 1510. He went to school in Vipuri, then in the cathedral town of Turku. The bishop of Turku at that time was a Dominican monk and sent him to study at Wittenberg, which is where he met Luther, Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon, because that's of course where Luther did his uh, uh, teaching and uh, of course really began to foment the Ref Reformation in, uh, in uh, Wittenberg in, in Germany. Upon returning home, uh, Agricola became rector of the cathedral school and eventually assistant to the bishop. On the death of that current bishop in 1554, Mikhail was consecrated as the new bishop of Turku and that was without papal approval. <clears throat> I'm sure by that time the Reformation had kind of settled in most most of Europe and, uh, of course, in uh, Finland. And he carried out himself a relatively conservative program of reform along Lutheran lines, retaining traditional doctrines and practices wherever he did not see the scriptural grounds for rejecting them. So he was not a, a real strident reformer, but a firm, solid, conservative reformer. Mikhail saw the importance of worship and teaching in the Finnish language. That's uh, kind of true of most of the reformers. Um, and that was the thing with Luther and, you know, with German in, in Germany. Mikhail accordingly established rules of orthography which are the basis of modern Finnish spelling, and wrote on uh, wrote a primer and a prayer book with other information, and a translation of the New Testament. 
So you get all of this important work with the language and the translation of the liturgy. Agricola translated many hymns into Finnish and collected hymns that had been written or translated by other people. He also took pains to learn what he could about the ancient pre-Christian myths and folklore of the Finnish people. He accounted for the, he was, he is accounted as the father of the written Finnish language. And if you've ever seen Finnish, I don't mean to laugh. I kind of do though. It's, it's, it's very, uh, it's, the words are long, full of consonants. It's, it's a very, uh, a lot of vowels, yes, but I mean, it's, it's, it's just a very hefty written language. And, and of course, pronunciation too. And that's why I want to be very careful with that. And, um, but it is, it is important. Uh, I take an interest in it, not being of Finnish heritage myself. However, I've served two parishes that had strong Finnish roots. Uh, and so I feel some tie to that in addition to here in my uh, marriage, being married to a Finnish uh, uh, descendant uh, in from, from Duluth. So there's a lot of Finnish connection there in my background. And if you look in your Ancestry.com or your uh, DNA uh, uh, in a sort of DNA programs, you know, you can see that a lot of times your ancestry will show traces of uh, ancestry in most, some obscure places, very just small traces. And there is some very small traces of Finnish ancestry in my background too, as well as Norwegian. I, I imagine that they all migrated, you know, and some of them migrated into Norway from Finland. Uh, and then, you know, um, through the ages, I'm just Norwegian. And uh, Scotch Irish on the other side, but that's another story. Anyway, uh, but, but I take an interest in the Finnish language we were trying to teach our son, you know, years ago. Uh, numbers, the numbers in Finnish. And, and there's another connection, because while I was in Brockett, North Dakota, the other parish I was served that had Finnish roots was in Rawa, North Dakota. But in Brockett, North Dakota, strong Finnish uh, area there, um, we had a neighbor right across the street that actually immigrated in the 50s from Finland. So it was like he had a, a Finnish uh, nanny, as it were. She babysitted him a bit. And it was kind of nice. <clears throat> anyway, uh, going on to Michaela Quickola, his accomplishments as a bishop are the more impressive. You consider, we remember that they took place in a short time, very short time. Three years after he became bishop, he was sent to negotiate a treaty with the Russians and on his return fell ill and died suddenly in his 40s. He was, what, uh, 47 when he died. So not very uh, long service uh, as a bishop of Turku, but uh, important work coming as it did at the Reformation, and, and as we say, the translation. How very important. You know, when the Bible was at one time uh, relegated mostly to the eyes of the clergy or the monks or those in, in universities schooled in Latin or Greek or Hebrew, 
and the idea of the reformers translating their scriptures as well as you see in the in the uh, terms of uh, Agricola uh, translating so much of the other elements of church life and worship life uh, to the language of the people you know the the liturgy the hymns how so very important uh, just like Luther did in German uh, Agricola did with Finnish and uh, so the people have had access to prayer and the singing of hymns and a, a vital church life you know where would we be without that having taken place you know in England all the translators there Tyndall and Coverdale and others and Cranmer and all those who had a hand in bringing the life of the church to the common people uh, in their own language um, Oh, very important that is to any culture. Uh, and so we're very thankful in the Protestant, Protestantism, as uh, in addition to Lutheranism, that um, these things took place. And uh, as it says in the scripture, and I guess I didn't read the scripture that I selected. That's Sorry about that. I launched into the devotion before the scripture, but uh, maybe this will be a good capping off then of the uh, idea here that, as I said, you know, it was the principle not just that we commemorate a, a certain person in history, but the principle behind it. And if you cannot, even if you cannot relate to a, uh, you know, the a, a Lutheran background or a, even a Finnish heritage. You can relate to the idea that the thing is that we have our worship because of people like this. We have our scriptures because of people like this, bringing it to us in our language for us to be able to read daily, to study, to partake and to pray. And so here I want to look at, uh, this comes the post-resurrection uh, post uh, stories in John, from the 21st chapter of John. And Jesus had this conversation on the beach there with, with Peter about, you know, uh, feed my sheep. And then uh, Peter turned from the 20, verse 20 on. Peter turned and saw, following them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, who thought to be John, because he comes up time and again in John. The disciple whom Jesus loved, who had lain close to his breast at supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Remember, they had that foot race on that first Easter to the tomb from the upper room between Peter and John. What about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. The saying spread abroad among the brethren that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say about him or say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he may remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself 
could not contain the books that would be written. A very interesting notion to come to in the last, very last verse of John's Gospel, talking about so many other things that Jesus did that are not recorded. But these are recorded for us to listen, to read, to study, to reflect on, to enrich our souls, to help us from day to day. These are written. I think another place in John, it probably says it even more eloquently, where it says, these are written that you may have life and have it abundantly. Yes, at the end of the previous chapter, I'll read it. The end of the previous chapter from verse 30 on, he says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book, not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life. In his name. So he recaps that idea at the end of the next chapter, the end of the book. Where would we be without those who recorded, like John, who recorded these things? And then Luther and Agricola, who translated them, and Tyndale and Coverdale and Grantmer. Where would we be without these folks who compiled this book and put it in our language and passed it on to us? I would add to them the work of Lutheran Bible translators who puts it into the, many of the most obscure languages or far-reaching languages that people don't normally think of or do commerce in from day to day. You know, languages in Africa and Asia and South America, places where people wouldn't know the scripture except the work of those who translate it. And the Gideons who hand them out, who distribute them to folks. We give thanks to all these people who help trans transmit the word of God to us as a part of their mission to help us with our mission in life, to live and serve as believing Christians. So we conclude our prayers. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and watch over you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.